Now, one day I was cutting my brother's hair. This is after I'd retired as a hairstylist. And he, and he said, sister, you really are the best hairstylist I've ever had. You're probably one of the best hairstylists in the world. And I said, well, well I, don't, I don't know about that, but what I did do when I was teaching people to cut hair, it didn't matter if they had 20 years experience, I still said, you have to show me that you can cut in the basic haircut. You take the first cut, the guideline, and you match, you balance the whole haircut around the guide. Then you do the lining and the edgings, and then you add the magic, and you run your fingers through the client's hair, and it will talk to you and tell you how you personalize it for that haircut. And I said, how I taught people to cut hair is exactly how I teach them to give a speech. Your first cut is your premise, your central theme. What's the big idea you're selling? The framework is the talking points that build it. The outline and the framework is the open and the close. And then the running your fingers through the hair and having the hair talk to you is you talk through it, get it into your body and see how it feels right. And I said, brother, I would always make sure even an experienced speaker, just like an experienced hairstylist, has to prove they can give me the simple structure. If they prove it, then they can start anywhere they like. And my brother said, well, sister, of course. That is because you always have to master the technique in order to abandon it. It has to become second nature. I want you to consider that you will probably, as this is called how you write a speech, you are going to write a short speech. You're going to transcribe a longer speech. And then you can take what actually came out of your mouth and then you edit and refine and have better word choices. Because we want to speak to be remembered and repeated. And what we might say casually in conversation and when we're first telling the stories, could actually be tightened and improved. And tomorrow morning, I'll be talking about how to get powerfully pithy. So when you have your script and you have your speech, then how do you put it under the microscope and take it to the whole next level? I guarantee you do not lack the talent to do this. You might lack the patience. You, the reason you have to pick a subject that you're enthusiastic about, because you're going to live with it for a while. You have to love the process. And I'm sure you get at times frustrated, but this is fun. Mastery takes a while. My brother says, 21 years. Now, I first got paid to speak in 1976. I'm still working at it, but it gets better. It gets easier all the time. Now, my brother you see, would say, with music, as with speaking, when you do something well, everyone says, oh, he's a natural. Oh, she, she doesn't have to worry. This is this natural. The easier it looks, probably, even with natural talent, you still need the discipline of following the process and the work.